Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with Zebu Nation. We're back with FC Cincinnati in the 2021 MLS regular season. And there's only a handful of games left. Four games left to be specific. And if, so after 30 games, we're still in first place. 18 wins, 8 draws, 4 losses. Total of 62 points. One point ahead of New York City Football Club. And four points ahead of Atlanta United. So, it's a very close, very tight race. Now, at the end of last episode, we had just beaten DC United, one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference, 2-0, dominated. And then we came back for the game I told you was going to be an easy victory. And we lost 3-4 to versus Orlando City. Orlando City is currently, they're not the worst team in the league, but they are, you know, down near the bottom of the Eastern Conference. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs this season at all. So it was kind of a surprise, and it's not like we were playing a ton of um, backups. The problem is Nuhu sent off in the 33rd minute, and we just couldn't... Uh, we couldn't stop the bleeding defensively after he went out. Uh, you know, down to 10 men, it was very difficult to even do anything defensively. But we were able to keep scoring, so it made it a highly entertaining game. So here's Orlando, of course, in the purple kits. Yatun just walks in and scores. That's the first goal. And then here's a catchy. With the uh, free kick to tie it up. At this point, I believe we're down to 10 men. Here is Orlando moving forward. A terrible play by Richards. Dwyer is gifted a goal, even though Stefan made a great stop there. But here we are coming back in the 60th minute. Acosta moving forward. Prisbilko out wide to Akechi, who's playing the left wing at the moment. Back to Prisbilko. He misses the header, but it falls right to Sonora. For an easy tap-in goal to tie it up. And here's an interception at midfield again by Orlando. Alexander, Dom Dwyer again scoring to go up 3-2, I do believe. And here's Orlando out wide. Hollingshead sends one back post. Alexander with the fourth goal. Made it 4-2, and then here we are trying to come back. 92nd minute. Sonora sends one forward. Prisbilko on the run. Finally scores. It's been a while since he scored. So that was great to get him on, you know, off the schneid. But we just couldn't uh, couldn't quite do enough being shorthanded. Uh, Ketchy did get the player of the match. 8.8 .8 rating. As I mentioned, he had to play left wing because, of course... You saw all of our injuries at left wing that we've been dealing with. Uh, most notably, our brand new transfer, Denner. $750,000 down the drain for this guy. You know, we don't necessarily need him next year. We needed him for this year. We needed him for the stretch run. And now he's gone. Adi is just coming back. Stefan has a bruised thigh. Hembut is unfit as well we got just we're breaking down here at the end of the season unfortunately so uh we got to be pretty careful about what's going on especially because the game we got coming up next new york city football club this is the game that could decide not just the eastern conference but this could decide the supporter shield as well take a look at New York City and how they've been doing recently. We can take a look at their schedule. They've been on a roll. Look at that. Undefeated for two months. They have not lost a game in July or August. Only one draw in that uh, period. And even coming into September. Wait, they only played one game in September? What is that about? That's crazy. I mean, I know we did have the... Uh, we had the international break and all that stuff. But, man, one game in September, huh? 
Okay. So, uh, they could be a little rusty. Let's uh, spin this positively. New York's had almost a month off. So maybe uh, maybe they're not going to be ready for this final month of October, or at least they're not going to be ready for this game on the second of October. That can be, uh, you know, something we can we can hope for. <laughs> Looked at New York City not too long ago, so I don't think we really need to sit here and di digest them. Is that what I'm thinking of? No, dissect them is what I'm thinking of. Anyway, uh, even though I was completely out of it during the last game we played these guys. Um, Still, we looked at them, so we're going to mosey on. I'm trying to keep the videos a little bit shorter. I've been getting negligent in sort of keeping any sort of time. So we're going to try to move along and try to ramble less. So here we go. New York City versus FC Cincinnati. New York City's 6-4 favorites. We are playing in Yankee Stadium. 22,000 tickets sold out of a 54 thousand seat capacity it is 62 and gusty possible rain showers there in new york city the referee victor rivas 1.4 yellow cards a match that's respectable we can deal with that uh no problem new who is suspended of course denner is out they're missing a couple players as well vieto is doubtful he's a big player for them willis out with a broken finger, Stephen Lee, hip injury. So a couple of bench guys and one starter possibly out for New York City. But that can be pretty bad for them because they're not a deep team. Uh, as you can see here, New York has won three of the last five against us. We've only won once in our last five meetings with New York City. So that is uh, some huge, um, a huge streak we need to end. Head coach, Clarence Seedorf. Not too familiar with this guy. The former Cameroon head coach. Did we look at him before? I think we looked at him before. Anyway, played at Milan. Was a head coach at Milan. So, yeah, he's been all over the place. Ajax, uh, Real Madrid, Inter. So, he's been everywhere. And now he's at NYC FC. He's a pretty decent coach. Tactical and technical type guy. Very good on the attack. Other than that, he's sort of, you know, just sort of average MLS level. But he is a very good tactician. So we got to watch out for him. All right. So here we go. Of course, we're going with the Z formation or the reverse Z now that Akechi is back. We got pretty much a starting lineup in. Clute is out for the bench. He is, you know, unfit. We've got ahead of several guys we need to give rest to. Adi still needs to rest. He's still unfit after coming back from that injury. Richie Salvador is finally kind of fit, but we don't necessarily need him right now. Uh, I think everything else is. Pretty much self-explanatory. So let's submit that team. And let's get to the match. I really am excited for this match. Championship type match. Let's do it. We got Stefan in goal. Stevenson getting the start at left back today for the suspended new who. Richards and Wilson back in defense. I think I need to swap them around though. I do need to swap them around. Anyway, Blackman at right back. Luis Philippe back in at Segundo Valente. Akechi to Vries finally back in the lineup. We'll see how long he can stay there. Hopefully he doesn't get injured again. Acosta, Sonora on the right, still leading the team in assists. Up to 12 assists now in 27 starts. And Prisbilko up top, leading the team in highest average at 7.51 and 16 goals in 17 starts. That's pretty good production right there as for new york they've got nielsen in goal sarachi a fulter gregenson and renato in defense Massa and davis is this sean davis okay sean davis 30 appearances playing pretty solidly in the midfield medina daniel zinho back at attacking center mid pulis on the right-hand side, he's their highest average-rated player. 7.9, only 
only two starts on the season. So this uh, young fella needs to get a few more starts. Vieto is going to play, and he's going to play striker. Interesting. I think he's normally playing on the wing. But, uh, is that correct, or am I thinking of somebody else? Yeah, I think he normally plays right wing. I mean, he's a very capable striker. So let's not, uh, let's not get any false confidence about that. Who's their normal striker is what I would like to know. Let's not do that. Let's not... Can we do that? Yeah, let's do that. Who's their normal striker? Let me see. Can we pick him out of a lineup? Hmm. Ola Kamara. That's right. That's who's usually starting for them. He doesn't look injured. It looks like they're just uh, making the change. All right. That's fine. We'll get to the dressing room. 62 degrees and showers. Let's give the pep talk ourselves this time. How about that? Uh, I know many of you are anxious to avenge what happened, so let's go. That's always sort of low-hanging fruit when it comes to pep talks. Everybody loves the revenge factor. Okay, let's just close down on Daniel Zinho. I think that's good. Yeah, that's good. All right, tunnel. Both teams coming to this one in good form. Send the assistant. All right, here we are. Yankee Stadium looking more and more like a uh, soccer stadium by the minute, apparently. Uh, I haven't heard if they're going to get out of there or not. I think there are plans to get NYC out of Yankee Stadium and into like a proper soccer arena, but we'll see. I mean, that's where... That's where all MLS teams are heading these days, other than New England. I don't think there's any... Oh, Vieto. He has re-injured himself. Here's a catchy. Sends one in, headed out by the defense. Matza has it. He's going to start the counterattack for New York City down the near sideline. He slows it up with a back pass to Davis. And uh, New York's going to reorganize here. They got players bumping into each other. Let's uh, get some sort of form... Dropping it back to Nielsen in goal. He's pressured there. Forced to turn it over at midfield. Philippe, great pass out wide to Senora. He's got some space on the far side. Cuts inside. Gets it forward to Acosta, who slams it home. That's what we want to see. The home crowd is cheering for some reason. I guess they appreciate a good goal when they see one. Senora, I thought this was a bit of a lazy pass here, but he laid it right up to Acosta, who had to back up a little bit. Still managed to put plenty of power onto that and score the first goal of the game. Ten minutes in, Cincinnati up a goal. That's what we want to see. So I don't know what it is. We, we can beat the good teams, but uh, not the bad teams. I don't know what that's all about. I mean, we did go down 10 men. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to account for that sometime. But I don't know. Does that cost Nuhu his starting job? That's an interesting question. Nielsen boots one downfield. Richards is there. I forgot to switch the defense around. Let's do that right now. You know, even though our defense is playing pretty decent. Here's Senora again, forward to Acosta. Gets it, lays it forward. Huh. Prisbilko didn't really make a run at that, or he got held up by the defense. It was hard to tell. There was a little hitch in the frame right there. Either way, we're going to keep going. Wilson has it, back on defense. Richards playing it out of defense to Akechi, who bombs it forward. DeVries getting his first touch of the game. Sends it ahead to Prisbilko. He's got Sonora moving forward. Sonora walks in on goal after a missed tackle attempt by the fullback. And we're up 2-0. That's what we're talking about. Here we go. Decent center. Great pass forward by Prisbilko. There's a missed tackle. I don't know what happened to the fullback. Looked like he bounced off. The back of Senora's cleats. I 
Uh, yeah, we'll still proceed with the changes after the goal. If we get scored on after this, like, I'm sorry. It's my fault. Got some yellow cards here from Blackman and Acosta. Uh, sure, we will tell Bookman to ease off tack Blackman <laughs> to ease off tackles because he's booked. Not Bookman, Blackman. Anyway, field, let's go. I mean, the, the match stats look fairly even, although we have 13 fouls to their one. But we're killing him. Here's a catchy. Richards going forward, heads it just wide. That was a pretty nice free kick. You're speaking of 2-0, I'm watching my local team, my brand new local team, the Lansing Ignite. They're on ESPN Plus of all places. ESPN Plus has picked up the television rights to uh, USL League 2 and possibly USL League 1. I'm not sure. But definitely USL League 2. Lansing Unite, their inaugural game is going on right now and they are up 2-0 over the Richmond Kickers. A team that's been around for a while at least, so it's pretty good for a brand new club to be winning their first game on the road, no less, 2-0. Anyway, there's your irrelevant update of a <laughs> soccer game that's probably going to be like a week old by the time you hear this. Anyway, I'm watching it, so you got to hear about it. Let's see. I'm very pleased with our performance. Keep it up. I don't think there's any changes I want to make at halftime. I mean, do we want to make the tactical change? No, not that. Uh, you know, we could just we could just dial it back. You know, do what we normally do in the dial back situation and waste time. Start the second half. We'll see what New York City comes out with. You know, if they uh, if they start to put on more pressure, then we'll just start bombing the ball forward. Here's DeVries. Plenty of space, cuts inside, shoots it. Not a great shot. Easy stop for Nielsen, but some quick pressure right off the opening kick of the second half. <sighs> Vieto's still injured. They haven't got him out of there. They, I mean, Kamara's on the bench. They didn't give us an injury report on Vieto, unfortunately. Um, Ola Kamara is on the bench. They could easily bring him in. Here we go, 52 minutes. Throw in far side for Stevenson. Gets it to Acosta. A catch he centers to Philippe. Plenty of space to move forward. Philippe looking around. Gets it to Senora. senora has got several options. He had Acosta, but he drops it back to Akechi. Akechi to Acosta, and he scores. Nielsen couldn't stretch out to make that save. Another long shot goal for Acosta. Lucho Acosta. Finally figured out how to pronounce his first name. They call him Lucho. Costa just bangs it off the post and in. Nielsen made a dive, but just oof, look at that. He's sitting on a 5.9 rating. Meanwhile, we're just sort of killing it over here. Defensively playing well. Stevenson. You know, like I mentioned... Knew who might just lose his job to Stevenson. Stevenson's not great going forward. Uh oh, here's Medina. He tries to curl one in there. <laughs> Stefan didn't even move. He just sort of realized. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's not great going forward at all. He's physically just so good. 6'2", imposing defender back there at left back. And if knew who's going to run around, you know, going on all these international uh, forays and then comes back and gets red cards and stuff, we just uh, can't have that. Uh, Stevenson doesn't, I mean, he's not kind of the guy we want as a starter, but, I mean, if, if you're going to produce the way he's produced, it's hard to keep him out of the lineup. Here's Medina now on the counterattack for New York City. Gets tackled by Philippe. Blackman there to clean up the trash. And we're going to take over, slowing it down. DeVries, Philippe as the outlet man. Segundo Valente 
New York is putting on a little bit more pressure, but it looks like we're able to handle it. Costa forward to Prisbilko. He gets it stolen at midfield. Vieto is now on right wing duty. Looks like Ola Kamara is in there now at the striker position. Here's Medina getting forward. Sends it wide to Renato, the fullback. There's Blackman. Heads it out, but nearly a disaster there. I mean, at 3-0, it would have to be a pretty bad disaster. Let's make a sub here. Let's get our yellow cards out, I think. At least Aguirre. I mean, at least Blackman. He's playing so well, but he does have that yellow card. Don't want to get a red. If Acosta gets a red, that's no harm, no foul. He's playing great. He's got two goals. We'll leave him in there to get the possible hat trick. We can get DeVries out of there, though. You know, he's he's done his bit. He came in. He started. He played 78 minutes. Let's get St. Duke in there. And not risk another injury to our left wing. Here we go. Sandro for NYC. Davis heads it over the goal. Disaster averted yet again. Acosta is a little tired at 68%. But I think we'll stick with him. 85 minutes down. Clock rolling. Don't need to interrupt things with a substitute. I was watching some Premier League games today, and you know, there's talk about concussions. And I was wondering what if they had a special substitute just for concussion protocol? Would that help things out? Because I know they're kind of struggling with that right now, especially since you only get three substitutes. Now I'm pretty sure that teams would try to take advantage of the like a special concussion substitution. Like you get one free concussion substitution per game and I'm sure teams would try to take advantage of that but you could you could work for you could work on some disciplinary things at uh, you know maybe the club level for that if they uh, if somebody tried to fake a concussion injury you know to, to gain an advantage in the game you could you know find the club a million pounds or something like that I don't know just a thought. Just a thought. Anyway, we dominated New York City 3-0. It's a bit of a mystery why we can beat the league, the teams at the top and uh, lose against the teams at the bottom. But honestly, at this time of year, all, all I care about is beating the teams at the top because pretty soon that's all we're going to be playing in the playoffs. Anyway, teams secure the playoff spot. San Jose and LAFC have guaranteed... Playoff spots, astute press conference. It's fine. Got to be pleased with your performance. Thought we played well. Acosta, yes. Two goals, 8.8 .8 rating. Good to get him back as well. He's been in and out of the lineup. And he's very important going forward. All right, schedule. Coming up next, we have Columbus Crew. Then finish off the season with New England and Portland. I think the uh, New England game, yeah, New England fourth place will definitely show that one. Columbus, you know, we haven't played Columbus in a long time, so I don't think this episode has gone very long, so I think we'll come back and actually do the Columbus game on camera just to make sure we don't lose this one. I don't know. We messed around and, lost against, and lost against Orlando. I don't want to repeat that, so we're going to pause this. And then uh, come back in a moment. Pause. Okay, we are back for the second game. Some big games this week in MLS. Nice cross-division game. Atlanta United versus LAFC. You know they're going to put that game on television. Cincinnati versus Columbus. Columbus is in ninth place. Not the biggest matchup. Uh, Colorado and FC Dallas fighting for playoff position in the West. Anything else going on here? New England and Seattle. More cross-divisional uh, games there. Fourth place versus first place in the West. Anything else going on here? Eh, I don't know. Take a look at the competitions. 
Still in first place, that victory over NYC put us four points up. Atlanta United, we're five points up from them. Um, New England, 15 points up from them. So we don't have to worry. We only have to worry about New York City and Atlanta, and we just put a little bit of distance between ourselves and them, so that's great. Um, haven't really looked at the Western Conference very recently. Seattle seems to have an edge there, five point up on Houston, uh, who's four points up on San Jose. So they seem to be locked into first and second, unless there's some sort of collapse in the last couple of weeks. Big, big games this week. Real Salt Lake only one point up on FC Dallas for that last playoff position. Two points up on LA Galaxy. That seems to be uh, where we're looking at in terms of uh, the playoff races. You know, even at the bottom of the Eastern Conference, DC United and Philadelphia have comfortable seven-point lead on Chicago. So it looks like really the only race currently is at the bottom of the Western Conference to see who's going to get that sixth and final playoff spot. Hmm. We're supposed to have the new playoffs in this version, I think. I don't remember. If, I mean, I know the database is updated. This is the basic stock database but i don't know if we had to restart the game in order to get the new playoff schedule i guess we'll figure that out once we get there but anyway uh we're going to get to today's match preview but we do have some club news to look at we've got um several signings not necessarily of players but of coaches so you know we've been re-signing our whole coaching staff uh, Stern, Pace, Peters, uh, Savelli, Sharindalo, you know, Clute. We did re sign Clute. Uh, Tony Miola back at one of our goalkeeper coaches. Henry, Hunt, you know. So basically, we just re signed the whole coaching staff, and that's fine. We haven't really played, paid much attention to our coaching staff this year, so you probably don't recognize many of those names at all and that's i guess fine it's one of the things i have neglected recently but there is something else going on and that is of course international duty new who zach stefan richie salvador and saint duke all out on uh, international duty of some sort or another usa played saudi arabia stefan in goal got the two nil victory so that's outstanding for them uh take a look at what what are they playing in they're still playing in the uh yeah the nations league so they got trinidad tobago up next interesting that they played saudi arabia oh that was a friendly okay that makes more sense so they got trinidad tobago coming up in the nations league fourth division Looks like they're going to win that division. They've, they're up three points on Trinidad. So as long as they don't lose this game to Trinidad, they will. Yeah, they had one draw against Trinidad. So as long as they win this game, they advance to the next round. So we are going to be missing some guys, including Zach Steffen. And that's not good. So if we look at the medical center, Hudson just came back from a little bit of a a uh, tight calf. I mean, we're still going to play him because he's the only match fit goalkeeper we have. We could throw Zendejas in there, but he is also an injury risk and he's completely unfit. So it's probably not a great idea. Fernando Adi is still unfit. Denner is still injured. So we got, you know, injury issues. Here we go. We are three to one favorites over Columbus. That's pretty huge. The rivalry game has not been a heck of a rivalry so far. We have won four of six games with one draw and one victory by Columbus. Uh, let's see. Machado is away on international duty. We've got three players away on international duty. Denner, of course, is more than doubtful. He is out. Sean Johnson ineligible. Okay, we're going to have to take a look at Columbus and see what they're up to these days. 
Uh, registration. What's going on here? Who, why was, why is Sean Johnson ineligible? They got 25 members on the squad. 3.9 million in payroll. So they're well under the salary cap. Eight internationals. Johnson is a disabled list. Okay, that's not good. Um, Machado, yeah, he's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so they've got issues of their own. But for the most part, looks like they've got their starting lineup. Who's going to be in goal for them? Jeff Caldwell, 25-year-old American, valued at $36,000. Not great. Nine reflexes. We could be in for a field day here. Let's get to our team selection. So we got some issues. Prisbilko. He's apparently also on international duty. Is he? Yeah, I guess so. He's got 11 caps now. He wasn't he wasn't listed here, was he? Or am I just did I just skip over him? Yeah, he's not listed here. What's up with that? Hmm. Where would he be flying to? If he's not on international duty, maybe he's flying back from international duty. That's what it is. He was there, but he's not anymore. Ooh, possibly. Anyway, um, okay. That makes things a little difficult. So we'll clear him out of there. We will also clear Stefan out of our goalkeeper position. So striker, keeper out also St. Duke out so our reserve left winger and slash right winger out um Hembut unfit coming back from an injury so it looks like our only striker option currently will be none other than Kiri Shelton <laughs> Not exactly what we're looking for. Um, yeah, that's no good. Um, Patrick Youngs can kind of play striker. I don't think he's played there all year. I don't think he's particularly fit. Then we can bring Wadey onto the bench. Of course, Hudson in goal. And Zendejas on the bench. Okay, bits of a wacky lineup here. Uh, we'll make, yeah, we'll make Shelton a pressing forward just to give us a little bit of a different look. Here we go. DeVries and Shelton are lacking match sharpness. Yeah, that's to be expected, I think. Here we go. You saw our lineup. Hudson and goal. I forgot to switch the. Defenders around again. Stevenson, Richard, Wilson, Blackman, Philippe, Akechi, DeVries, Acosta, Sonora, and Kerry Shelton up top. For Columbus, Caldwell is in goal. Elder, Nick Haglin, Mensa, Juan Fran still hanging out there at right back. Artur is still in uh, defensive midfielder. Will Trap, K. Scott. Look at this. He looks about 12 years old. He is actually 23 years old. Kyle Scott. He's got a real picture and everything. Came over from Chelsea. Back in 2013. He's played for... So he played very young for Chelsea on loan. Huh. Columbus picked him up on a free last year. Played 19 games, 3 assists. Still the same rating, 6.76. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Anyway, Santos, their leading assist man with seven assists and eight goals. Also the top goal scorer. So we got to watch out for Pedro. Campbell, highest average rating, a regen of some sort, 18 years old, right winger. Comes from the Crew Academy. This is his first real playing time. 13 appearances, three goals, two assists. He's playing well. We're going to have to watch out for that young man. And then Jassy Zardes up top. Everybody should know him. He is a fine player. All right. 
Let's go. Opposition instructions. I mean, Santos, we might as well close down on him as much as we can. Same with Campbell. He seems to be playing well. Will Trap tightly mark him. No need to tightly mark our tour. I think that's fine. Tunnel talk. Tunnel talk. Let's go. Send the assistant. That's fine. Here we are. Home game versus the crew. This should be a rivalry game, but it's not really much of a rivalry here in FM. They haven't really accounted for it. So maybe in the next version of FM, they'll uh, they'll make more out of it. But we are, of course, in the blues. And Columbus is, of course, in the yellows. Here's Sonora. Great cut inside. He's got several men, but he takes it himself. He had Acosta and Akechi both in the middle of the field. Sonora took the shot himself. Wins a corner. Akechi on the near side. Sends one in. Richards sort of miraculously heads that one. But Caldwell makes the easy stop. Three minutes in. We already got a highlight, so that's good. Two shots, two on target. I guess it doesn't matter. We just plug anybody in, right? Plug in whoever you want, and we'll keep winning. Watching some highlights here of Lansing United. That should have been a goal. Uh, <laughs> it's halftime, by the way. Uh, not Lansing United. I, I'm going to call them Lansing United forever, but it's Lansing Ignite. Anyway, we should encourage our players to play more direct. Uh, I can get down with that. Sure. Did they just say? Did they just say the exact opposite? We should encourage our players to play more short passing. Okay. Remove, hit early crosses, and try. We'll try that. Second half, I guess. Kiri Shelton is injured. Of course. Potential groin injury. He should be able to play through it. We'll let him play to halftime. Then, uh... Move Acosta up to striker, possibly? You know, we do have Crispum on the bench. That is... You know, disturbing. The old, when it rains, it pours syndrome... First was left winger. Now it's striker. What's next? Better not be goalkeeper. <laughs> uh, most of our positions were two or three deep. But, you know, that depth only goes so far when all your injuries happen at the same one or two positions. All right. Tactics. First things first. Switch the defenders around. There we go. Next things next. Acosta. Can he play striker? Sort of. What does Patrick Young's look like when he's up there? Not much better. Basically the same. So I think we will move Acosta up to striker. Bring in Crispum. Probably something you never thought you'd see. Um, Trek Artista. Sure, why not? I don't think you're probably supposed to pronounce it, pronounce it with that much gusto, but hey, I'm excited. All right, dressing room. Players are in high spirits. Um... We're the favorites here, so go out there and do what you do. Hudson excited about that. Akechi and Acosta. Okay. Fine pep talk. All right, let's go. Oops, I forgot to change team instructions. By the way. By the way. Slightly shorter passing. All right. Let's see what we can do. That was a quick first half. Not a lot happened, so we'll see if we can maybe... Maybe, here we go. First highlight, 47 minutes in. Akechi on the corner. Wilson's header goes off the crossbar. Columbus clears it. All right. So that was kind of our one highlight in the first half as well, was a corner. Here we go. We get another corner. Akechi sends one in. Richards at the near post. 
Wilson at the back post can't get a boot on it, but we do win another corner out of it, so we're going to do it from the near side this time. Tavries, left-footed, sends it in. Akechi gets the rebound. Oh, miscommunication out wide with Crispum. All right, Crispum is 34. Is he not? He is. Huh. Here we go. Throw in Blackman right side. We're getting a lot of special teams plays here. Philippe recovers to Akechi. Akechi wide open. No, tries to get it to DeVries. Intercepted. And now Zardes starts the counterattack for Columbus. Campbell down the near side. He's harassed by Stevenson. A diving tackle. That could have been a foul, but he gets ball. So we continue. And here's Akechi now. Reverses field to Sonora. Senora diving inside, centering, no, across to DeVries, to Crispum. Crispum centers to Acosta, and there it is. Who says the little guy can't play striker? I mean, it's basically like we're playing two attacking midfielders now. Uh, you know, no strikers, honestly. It's like um, sort of the hammerhead formation. Anyway, good pass to DeVries. Great pass forward to Crispum. Over to Acosta, who's wide open in the slot, and he scores. Is there a slot in soccer? I don't think so. Because they don't have the face-off circles, so there's no, like, you know, space between the face-off circles that would form a slot. Anyway. Anyway. He scored a goal. <laughs> 67 minutes, throwing far side for Columbus. Can the crew get one back? Spoil our championship run. That's really what they can hope for now is just be spoilers. They're holding on to the ball. We're not necessarily pressing them. Maybe playing a cost at Trick Artista is not a great idea because he's not putting any pressure on them. Here's Zardes now moving forward. Gets behind the defense. Great stop by Hudson. All right, let's make. Uh, Advance forward, I guess. You know, we could just bring him down into the attacking midfield, right? Like, is that illegal? I don't know. Here's Santos. Sends it from the corner. Uh, Hudson. Too many bodies in the way. I don't know what that was, but he couldn't get a handle on that short shot, and the rebound dropped straight to Zardes. Take a look at this. There's a lot of traffic right here in the middle. You know, Not a great shot by Mensa, but Hudson just couldn't get a handle on that one. Columbus evens it up. Seventy-two minutes. We're heading towards what looks like a draw. Hmm. Is anybody not playing well? I mean, Senora and Devries aren't doing amazing. Let's let's pause here. Let's do some tactics. How about that? How about some tactics? So in possession, you know, we're doing all this stuff. Let's get rid of all that. And then should we slide Acosta down here and do that? Do the hammerhead formation. Sure, I guess. Is there any harm in that? I don't know. Just means we don't have a striker. We'll see how that works. I mean, I don't like strikerless formations just on principle, I suppose. Don't really have any tactical or technical reason. Just sort of don't like the idea of not having a striker. Here we go. DeVries sends one in. Wilson with the header. Set pieces for the win. 83 minutes. DeVries to Wilson. Yes. It's 
Cincinnati up two to one right in front of the Columbus crew section. It's a pretty decent crowd there of crew, and you would you would assume there would be. Seeing that the two teams are not that far apart. 83 minutes. Blackman bombs it to Senora. Looking, looking. The two attacking midfielders going forward. Acosta to Crispum. He's going to return the favor. Look at that. Back-to-back -back goals. Have we, have we discovered a new formation? I mean, it's not new, obviously. But this is the true Z formation. Right, with our normal Z formation, we have sort of that nub at the top that is the striker. And without the striker in there, great goal by Crispum. Without, you know, it is a flat, I mean, we switch those around, it would be a flat Z formation. The true Z, maybe we should add that as our third formation because we haven't used our third formation in forever. Anyway, here we go again. No, <laughs> I, was like, I was about to get excited there for a second. Crispum. I mean, you know, Acosta and Crispum are two of our better, or at least more productive players. Uh, Lansing and Knight up 3-0, by the way. Anyway, here we go. Columbus trying to get one back. Three minutes of stoppage time left. Stevenson heads it to DeVries. We're going to start the counterattack for FC Cincinnati. Coming down the near sideline. It's a tackle by Will Trapp, but DeVries sticks with it. Gets it to a catch. He bombs it forward. Crispum out on the right wing somehow. He sends it back left wing for DeVries with the goal. What's happening? What's going on here? Um, I am dumbstruck here. We go from possibly losing to winning 4-1. And uh, discovering a new formation here out of necessity. This is, uh, you know, we're going to have to think about this one. Look at this. 26 shots, 14 on target. 93 minutes down. DeVries. Caldwell snags that one out of the air. This is probably going to end the game. And we're going to have something to think about tactically. Come on, just blow the whistle, ref. I mean, you, I know you don't want this to end. You want to continue to experience the ultimate Z formation. Look at that. Crispum comes in off the bench. 8.5 rating, a goal, and two assists. Hmm. Hmm. Pep talk. Let's be passionate. Very happy. Let's go. All right, let's get to the tactics page here real quick. Let's see. L.A. beats Atlanta. Of course, Cincinnati beat Columbus. Dallas and Colorado drew. I don't think that helps out FC Dallas one bit. Uh, Houston and L.A. L.A. gets the victory, so that moves them, I think, ahead of Dallas. I mean, I guess we could look at the competitions. Let's see here. L.A. has moved up to 13th place overall. And they've moved into 6th place because of that draw between RSL and FC Dallas. Right? Is that right? Did those Were those the two teams that draw or did they draw? No, RSL lost to Chicago. FC Dallas got the draw against... Yeah, okay. So that... That's why they're tied now. But anyway, regardless of that, L.A. jumped the both of them and uh, is now in the sixth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference. So good for them. Good for them. And meanwhile, we continued our four-point cushion over New York City, and we have qualified for the second round of the playoffs. So we for sure do not have to play in the wild card round. That is outstanding. Okay. Enough of that. Let's get to tactics. Tactic number three. What? Yeah. See, we haven't used this in so long. So we'll just, we'll just, you know, do that. 
Oh, look at that. The true Z formation. That is wild. Okay, but, you know. There we go. Huh. 4141 DM wide direct. That is intriguing. Kiri Shelton injured. How badly? Uh, one to six days. Not terrible, but he may like never play again because we're just going to put Crispum in there. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, we're going to end it there. Come back for, I suppose, the New England game and uh, finish out the regular season. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>